start at 9 30. Thank you for being here. Um, we are uh, Data Network Solutions. Uh, we're going to present uh, on helping service delivery organizations uh, be more efficient at doing what they do. Um, highlighting a couple of uh, technologies that, that DNS sells and also um, highlighting a customer case. Uh, this is Marcus Green from City of Fayetteville. Um, and he has uh, worked with us for quite a while to uh, re-architect several things in this environment. And I just wanted to kind of talk through this. Um, we're giving away an iWatch to this thing to a uh, lucky listener. Okay. Without further ado, so uh, DNS is a uh, we're, we're a service provider ourselves. Um, we sell all kinds of stuff, but uh, we're really an integrator, reseller. Uh, we can source your gear and we can also help you and integrate things together. Um, kind of what we want to go over is, uh, like I said earlier, we're, we're basically um, going to talk about City Fayetteville's implementation, and I'm trying to leave some room at the end of this. We have 45 minutes and may not have time to get through it, but at the end of it, uh, we'll have some Q&A time. Some of the stuff that Data Network Solutions uh, does with kind of a broad portfolio of products. If I had a trench coat with brand names in it, I would flash it at everybody, but uh, they won't let me get away with that. Um, so we're kind of working across the stack of uh, network infrastructure, security, solutions, virtualization, and uh, I mainly around storage and virtualization and things that happen in the data center. So our uh, challenges of, of local government organizations, uh, kind of an array of challenges that we're facing today um, around these topics here, security, cloud services, everybody's looking at ways to get to the cloud or ways to stay out of the cloud, depending on your stance on these things. Um, these are just sort of our top level business challenges that we're facing, and all of you probably have some slice of this. We originally came to Marcus, he had a uh, SAN, a legacy SAN solution for EMC, uh, had disparate solutions on either side for his uh, DR location, it was really the police station in the building next door. Um, we're not able to take advantage of replication, they had some things that were uh, needed to be replaced. So we came in with a NetApp solution. Uh, some of NetApp's value add here was uh, in, in the data center, uh, we, we have tons and tons of, of customers on that app. And six years I've worked for DNS, I don't have a single reference for a customer who's lost data due to any faults on the storage array. So uh, I kind of hang my hat on their reliability and data management capabilities. Um, they do have uh, a mixed portfolio as well, data on tap, and cluster data on tap is a scale out SAN technology, it's multi protocol, um, general purpose. Um, as well as some high-end applications, uh, extreme features in data management with replication, snapshots, and, um, some, some deep integration with lots of the application stacks like SQL, and Exchange, and VMware. Uh, and then we are going to highlight here, we, we ran into, when we started, Flash was kind of a new thing and it was too expensive for anybody to afford. Um, we implemented a small amount of Flash in their original system and we're able to replace their fiber channel infrastructure with an Ethernet infrastructure. Um, that kind of reduced the run rate uh, even that get that year lit. Um, but NetApp has uh, dedicated all flash arrays. Uh, we have E-series arrays from NetApp which are really optimal uh, for video storage. Uh, happens to be another topic that is coming up pretty fast is where are we going to put all this video. Um, E-series arrays are ideally suited for feeding video data from HD cameras in, in bulk. Um, and then storage grid is a, is a larger scale-out object storage environment uh, for, for big, big service providers. Um, some of the innovations that NetApp's had through the years uh, are on this slide. Uh, I'll read them all to you. Uh, but they, you know, several things have come out um, <coughs> kind of first in the industry with several technologies and uh, all leading 
technologies and extremely functional. Um, the one at the top of that is uh, the all flash array. And it, it, I have a funny slide later. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, some other highlights of uh, where NetApp fits you know, within the state and local governments. Um, 25 of the largest states using NetApp. Um, we have them all over the place as well. Example B. This is example A of uh, places, customers. We have a couple of references uh, in here that DNS has done. Obviously, we work in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia primarily, so we're not doing Maryland. So some of those are specifically NetApp customers um, or local uh, customers here in North Carolina and South Carolina. We have uh, some notable um, customers here, um, City of Raleigh. And, City of Fayetteville, obviously, is running. You guys have some stretch. The, the DR site is no longer next door. Um, got that across across the, the city. Um, Doctor, um, you know, Marcus Green with the uh, City of Fayetteville, the Chief Technology Officer there. And uh, some of the problems that we faced in uh, late 2012, early 2013, uh, were uh, we had a discontinuous storage environment. As Wes mentioned, we had dual storage SAN devices, but they didn't communicate with each other. And uh, from different conversations, we had to add in different appliances to get that done. And what we wanted was a single pane of glass, not only for replication, but also for uh, uh, backups. So we no longer wanted to go to a second application to set up, uh, take backups, and run backup jobs, <coughs> that type of thing. So we took a look at NetApp, and NetApp allowed us to do replication all in the data on tap uh, application, as well as uh, snapshots and backups. So that covered both of those uh, issues for us. The second issue was our core was very rigid, very monolithic. We had very large uh, chassis switches, and then all of those chassis switches were eight to 10 other single point of management for uh, uh, different access layer changes. So we went with uh, a Juniper virtual chassis solution, which allowed us to combine all of those switches in the core to one single place of management. And that was big for us because we weren't getting more people, but we were supporting more devices, which meant more access later changes. Uh, the third thing, which allowed us to increase our virtualization, was uh, getting that NetApp storage and also getting that uh, Juniper virtual chassis in C. So we didn't have, we had uh, 10 gig going from our virtual environment up to our core, and then we also had iSCSI connections going over to our NetApp SAM. So those changes uh, allowed us to increase our saturation of virtualization and also launch a very successful VMware View uh, implementation. Some of this talked about it already. Mentioned that we uh, we brought in the NetApp shared storage, took advantage of integrated <coughs> recovery and replication technologies. Um, later, they discovered that they needed tape. They needed to have some kind of an archive tier rather than having snaps on the storage array and copies of those snaps at the DR location. They needed a way to drop that to a uh, static media and then vault it off offsite. Uh, and so we were able to we pull the server. Um, uh, server they already owned up uh, and connected it to a, a tape drive that had probably 10 miles on it um, and they were getting no value out of it so 
Um, I don't particularly love Symantec <coughs> back of exec, but they already own the licensing for it, had the investment, they had the investment in the tape system and the server. So I did the professional services to implement that, and basically we're just dumping our backup sets in full yeah, off to tape and vault and tapes out of, out of that location. Um, all of our primary backup and recovery is done uh, with native, uh, native integrated um, snapshots uh, and snap manager products. Uh, so for the day-to-day -day backups and things that are usually you know, less than seven days out, most, most backups, uh, most restores are done from yesterday. So we keep about seven, 14 days in the hopper, and then we mirror that entire data set to the second site, um, off which we dump off our tape backups. But we don't have a daily tape management problem anymore. So our uh, tape goes into play after 30 days. We keep all of our snapshots for 30 days in the NetApp environment, which means we went from a day of recovery time of about two to three days a lot of you guys are familiar with this, having to shuffle through and find out where that data is on specific tape. You're going directly to the NetApp interface and restore it from there. You actually just grab that volume, move it over to another VM, and then you can just copy it over to the location that it was in. So that took a, a lot of time away from our system administrator, where she'd have to go in and, and do those backups or do those, do those restores could have taken, or was taken two to three days to less than 30 minutes. Right. You said most of your stores are fairly instantaneous then, aside from somebody getting out of bed to click the button. Right. Yeah. So we kind of merged these, these three technologies together. We kind of brought in, they were at a vSphere 4 level, we brought them up to vSphere 5 and implemented some of those new changes, and then we brought on a, basically 100 seats of VDI. Um, on a pilot project. Um, we ran into some issues later. Um, sort of a, a slide I put together to talk about the data management architecture, how we're, how we're getting stuff taken care of. We were just describing how we've got backups coming off our primary array. Um, we're taking advantage of these features from NetApp called Snap Mirror. It's asynchronous replication. Um, and we're, we've got anywhere from a five minute to one hour interval for getting data to the DR location. Um, so we're kind of keeping that, that fairly fresh. And uh, they also have a distributed routing core um, so that uh, if the main city hall uh, core routing goes down, then they can flip that to run off of Fire Station 15. Uh, and that's, that's all of their core routing. And they have a compute grid and a storage array at the other side, um, off which they can print things up and run with probably, I don't know, your, RTO, RPOs are pretty tight on this, so um, so far we haven't needed it, but uh, it's one of those things. And this is this uh, infrastructure supports our police department and other city services, but primary police department and 911 communication system. So instead of doing a large uh, scale VR site. We just stood up another a warm site at one of our fire departments, and then for we use a hybrid cloud solution for regional storage. So the fire station is on a different uh, power and uh, data structure, so that uh, if something goes down at the city, it should not be down at fire station 15. But then we're using hybrid cloud for regional backup. Anybody have any questions at this point? And a little eye chart for you. Um, we kind of started here. This is a, sort of a growing pain we ran into. We started with a 100 user license for view. We were using link clones for uh, creating these quickly and, and implementing a non-persistent desktop environment to mitigate you know, threats from user sessions. Um, at around 100 desktops, we started feeling it here in the storage array. Uh, which was ideally suited for general purpose workload, but um, as we tapped out over about 100 concurrent sessions in BDI, we started feeling it in our databases and other places as well. Uh, so we, we uh, had this problem and we solved the problem with a giant sledgehammer um, that I like to call the uh, EF550. It's 
it's all flash array. It's about started with like about seven terabytes of storage just to put the linked Plum desktops on. Um, we were immediately uh, the, the primary storage system when we removed the VDI workload from it was you know 20% utilization at that point instead of the 100% it was at. Uh, latency has all dropped, uh, and we basically put a flash drive in everybody's virtual desktop. Uh, it took us basically three hours to implement. Uh, so it was a nice, um, very slick solution for high-performance virtual desktops. So we talked about where they were, we talked about what we did to resolve some of those things, and we wanted to talk a little bit about where they're headed. So Marcus has some, some future goals here around bring your own device uh, as it relates to the VDI environment. I actually, when I need to help them, I remote into a virtual desktop through U Security Server, no VPN. I hop in and uh, help them out. And they had an interesting challenge uh, as we did knowledge transfer with their admin, uh, worked with them, and uh, they lost him uh, once six months into the project. And they lost him, so all of our knowledge transfer uh, had to be redone. And, and so I worked with them uh, while he was uh, out. Uh, worked with them to to uh, kind of cover the bases. We don't generally do first call support, uh, but they had a unique situation, and now they're back on the road with this. And, and I get a call or something's so a problem, but very rare. And that's a success story for me. At high level, 10,000 foot view of uh, exactly where we ended up. Um, this is uh, there's a there's a publicly available write up on the NetApp site about this 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 success story at, at City of Fayetteville, and these are some of the, the highlights here. Um, nice quote from Marcus. And. Yeah, we're not getting that much out of it because we don't have enough workload. We tapped out at around 10,000 IOPS out of that array, uh, and that's because we don't have enough users. So we need more people to be on it. We have about 165 concurrent users. What do you hope to grow to? 800. And, and I expect that the device actually should should deliver. I had NetApp put it in a lab and bang on it and give me some real world VDI performance metrics off of it. Um, early on, VDI tended to, uh, people thought that it was going to be mostly read because it's the same Windows 7 box that you're cloning and you're reading off of it. It turns out it's mostly write. It's about an 80% write workload and a 20% read workload. Um, and those calculations up front started to show themselves at, at around 100 desktops. Um, latency on the desktops, uh, latency on the array with, with 10,000 IOPS coming out the front side and 160 concurrent sessions, uh, latency is still sub millisecond. Um, that's what's on the bring it on. So we're, we're basically scaled to handle 800 to 1,000 desktops on the array. Uh, and today we have, we went from 7 terabytes to 14 terabytes on the array in the same 2U platform, which is added some more SSDs to it. It's,
we have recommendations for what they get information for a role within it or Oh. 